Part 2. The Great Forest of Tob was silent under the oppression of its new rulers. That was because all the living beings here had gone into hiding, afraid of the gaze of those who held power over them. However, that was not the case for a specific area of the forest. The sound of tree cutting and logs being moved filled the air in that place. There was a golem which resembled a piece of heavy machinery, a heavy iron machine which carried logs to a massive wooden structure that was still under construction. It looked like it would take a long time before that building was complete. While it occupied a large area, the portions which had actually been constructed were surprisingly small. A group of undead and golems worked there. Among these undead were elder liches who wore eye-catchingly bright red robes. Every now and then, they would be approached by demons that were roughly 30 centimeters tall small monsters with bat wings and coppery red skin, called imps. The imps kept their slender tails which were tipped with venom dripping stingers out of the way lest they get in the way of the elder lich's work. One hard-working elder lich unfurled the blueprints he was holding and gave orders to one of the golems under him. The golem obediently stopped what it was doing and compared the worksite before him to the blueprints, before pausing to cogitate. Shortly after, it spoke to the imp on its shoulder. After hearing it out, the imp indicated that it understood, and took wing. Flying with ungraceful movements, the imp opened its eyes and took in the surrounding area. Before long, it found its target and swooped down. Said target was the guardian of the sixth floor of the great underground tomb of Nazarick or Abella Fiora. In other words, she was one of the people who now ruled this forest. The dark elf girl rolled up her scroll into a megaphone so her voice would carry out to a long distance. The imp landed before her and bowed deeply, whereupon she asked in a familiar tone, All right and which group are you from? Or a summer, I come from number three in you group. You group, huh? All right, got it. Anything else? The work crews here were divided into named after the vowels from a to o, and they were assigned to work on different areas. From what Aura could remember, U group was assigned to the storehouse. Progress on that was the second fastest among all the other areas. There's a discrepancy in the thickness of the timbers used in construction, so could we please have more time? The imp suddenly shut up, because the steel band around Aura's wrist suddenly made a sound. Break time. Aura's face changed as she heard that lazy, yet cheerful voice. Her ears drooped, and she looked oddly vulnerable and embarrassed. Got it, book a book at Chigama Sama. She answered the wristband. So, uh, it's time to eat, so we're done working for the morning. Hardly any of the monsters here need to eat. In fact, Aura was also wearing a ring of sustenance which eliminated the need for food or sleep. However, her master had insisted that Everyone must take breaks from time to time, so she had to obey him despite her wishes. Ah, sorry about you, but I need to rest, so come back in an hour's time. Understood. Then I shall take my leave first. The imp bowed and flew off amidst a storm of noisy flapping. As she watched the imp fly off towards the storehouse, Aura worked her shoulders, and then glanced down at the band around her wrist. Then, her face was all smiles. This was a reward her master had given her for her hard work. Of course, the guardians had been created to serve their master and the supreme beings, so working hard for them was a fundamental fact of life. Thus, they should not have accepted a reward, as their labor was only a matter of course. However, she could not refuse the band her master had given her. Ku, I want to hear more of Booker Book at Chigama's voice. Or tenderly caressed the band on her wrist. That gesture was more loving and gentle than how she stroked her own beasts. All the voices recorded into this item came from the supreme being who had made Aura. They filled Aura with delight, even if all they did was tell the time.
She had felt jealous when she learned that her brother, Mare, had received a ring of Ainzu or gown, but in all honesty, she felt that this item was better. Eha. Aura's ears drooped and she caressed the band with an embarrassed look on her face. Then she nodded in satisfaction as it gleamed in the sunlight. But shortly after that, she tilted her head in bafflement. Why did Ains Sama say that I could not set it for certain times? Ains Sama had commanded that the watch not be set to state the times of 07, 21 or 19, 19, among others. Hmm. I might as well ask him. Eh? Crap. After noticing the time which floated above the watch, she hurriedly rushed off. There was a maid at her destination. The 41 maids who served the great underground tomb of Nazarick were heteromorphic creatures called homunculi. All of them resembled beautiful women. However, she did not. She had the head of a dog that was divided down the middle by a line it resembled a scar, complete with traces of stitching. It looked as though her face had been split in half and joined back together again. Her name was Pestonia S. Wonko. She was the head maid of the great underground tomb of Nazarick, and a high-level cleric. I had brought the hamburger over as you wish, Orisama. The side dishes are two pickles and unpeeled French fries, while the drink is cola. 1. The delay before the 1. Made Aura think that she had forgotten to add her verbal tick at the end of her words, but Aura did not comment on it. Her attention was focused on the smell that tantalized her tummy and made her drool in anticipation. While the ring she wore meant that she did not need to eat, it did not make her unable to do so. In addition, eating was a pleasurable activity, especially when it came to such delectable cuisine. The combined effects of this food and drink are... Ah, no need for that. I didn't ask you to make this for me just to boost my stats. Understood 1. Aura approached Pestonia and the dinner service she was pushing, which emanated a delicious scent. Time to eat, time to eat. Pestonia whipped the silver lid off the tray as Aura intoned her eating rhyme. Oh. Aura's eyes were glued to the food as it revealed itself, and at the same time she blurted out something which came to mind. A7 beef mince is good, but I prefer mixed mints. I hope you can make a triple patty with that meat. Then, I shall inform the head chef of your wishes one. Mm, thank you. Aura picked up the entire tray and giggled as she strode off.